I am uh, Bob from RetroRGB.com. I used to live in Connecticut for a giant portion, portion of my life, and now I'm in Manhattan because apparently I don't like space or money. <laughs> <laughs> so I always find Manhattan a nice place to visit. But uh, So uh, what we wanted to talk about today was uh, the, the Field Programmable Gate Array Revolution, or FPGA. And it's a topic of discussion. There's a lot of things going on, both commercially with the uh, analog consoles and some things that attach to them, and the MISCAR project, which is an open source project. And um, we're going to briefly talk about the concepts, and then we're going to show you how all this stuff works. And uh, the best way to think of an FPGA is a hardware, this is where we're going to get into the semantic arguments, uh, is a hardware simulation of the original stuff. So if you think about it, and correct me when I'm wrong on any one of these things. Uh, if you think about software emulation, you're writing software to go in and try to uh, have an existing platform like Windows, Mac, or Linux uh, run these old games and kind of replicate in software what the hardware was doing. The challenge is, is that even though these consoles are old, they are really massively parallel computers. So for example, the Sega Genesis had a 68,000 processor, a Z80 audio chip that was used for these master system stuff, and then you had all these audio and video chips all working together. And the best way, in my opinion, and I think in yours as well, for original hardware, is to create the logic to replicate exactly how the software worked. And that's what an FPGA does. There's some very smart people, way smarter than me, uh, who are able to look at the logic of how these chips operated, rewrite them in a language for these devices, and the result is you have near perfect replication of the original, but you can then take the display and put it in an HD TV or projector or whatever else that's out there. And one of the reasons why I wanted to have Bob here is that he's an expert on input lag. And one of the things that I noticed when I first started playing with these consoles is that they felt more real to me because I was a kid of the 80s and 90s and when I pushed a button something happened immediately and I couldn't put my finger on it, but I was noticing I wasn't as good at the games as I was when I started playing with them in emulation. And I thought it was maybe age, my age, but in fact, it's, there's more to the story. Correct. So everything you just said is 100% spot on. Um, the only thing I'll add, just as a different perspective, is the way I like to think about it is, it's software emulation and FPGA emulation have two things in common. Uh, they're both giving you the experience of older consoles without any original pieces of that hardware in there. Um, but the only difference is that, just like Lon said, software emulation is a software layer running on top of an operating system. An FPGA emulation takes a chip and reconfigures it to mimic the chips of the original console. So theoretically, both could be perfect. Both rely on how good the programmer is, because it takes very smart people to do either one of those. But you could, with a much less powerful, in theory, FPGA, get a flawless recreation of these classic consoles, whereas you would need an extremely fast PC in order to do software emulation that's as fast and there are certain things that you'll never be able to accomplish, like using original carts in real time through software, because even though it's milliseconds, it's still not exactly, whereas the FPGA can just, like a transformer, become the other console. It's really cool when you see it working on a MISCAR. So we're gonna start real quick, though, on the analog console here. So we have the, uh, the Mega SG, and then on top of it, I have the Mega SD, I'm lucky I have an understanding wife and that I do this for a living now because I, I can buy all this stuff. Um, you're looking at what, about 400 and something for both of these two things? Yeah, it's, yeah. you know, the analog consoles are like 240. I think that much more. Okay. Yeah, but the, the Mega SD is like 260. Now, and what's cool about this is that we have two FPGA systems working together here because remember, the Sega CD was almost a separate console in of itself. And what this cartridge does on this, but also on original hardware, is basically gives you a Sega CD. Uh, oops, I hit the wrong button here. Uh, gives you a Sega CD without the CD. It actually works all through the cartridge slot. And we've both done videos on this, so you can get more detail on it. And I'm going to um, play the definitive de edition of, of Sonic the Hedgehog CD. And I'm sure I'm gonna get thrown when the music start up. But as you can see here, the console is basically thinking it's a Sega CD, the BIOS is loading up off of that, and what's happening here is these two FPGAs in concert are working to replicate the experience of what you would have had with original hardware, and it does it exceptionally well, including the CD audio. There we go, sound it going, we get the start button and play the game and everything else. What I love about the analog consoles is that you buy them, you put the cartridges in, and they work. Um, so I just play my old 30, 30 
modified your cartridges on it. As my flash cartridges, they have a means in which now you can uh, use your um, flash cards on the side of it to actually load things in that way. Uh, virtual erasers, Chris is working on it now too, I think. Yeah, they, uh, they were able to get that working on the Mega SD. It's not perfect, I believe, but that's, it's good enough where it's, you know, now you get to use it through a flash card. So. And it's really cool stuff. So that's kind of the, the gist of this. Does that make sense to everybody? I just want to make sure everyone's kind of got the idea. Yes, you could do this on your Raspberry Pi for 35 bucks, fine. I think though, if you're noticing you're not as good at the games as you used to be, it's because your muscle memory remembers that this was a very different input lag situation. And I think that's generally the advantage here. Uh, and then of course, there's some uh, authenticity things that you run into as well. 